Today we're going to talk about how to build a coolant recovery tank for your car, whether that's a, a street rod, a sports car, or, or a custom car, or whatever. So watch this video to learn how to DIY an alloy recovery tank. So what size tank do you need? First step, work out what size you need. Use manila folders, uh, cut out size, to make the templates for the tank body and the end caps. And then you can refer to an online calculator to check that the size and the capacity is correct. So the idea of the cardboard is to try various sizes <coughs> so that you can fit in the size tank that you need in the area that you need in the car. It doesn't have to be too big, but you don't want it too small because of the overflow. Um, it's a, a re catch tank and recovery tank. So um, a lot of them are around a litre, maybe a little bit more. Uh, so that gives you an indication of size. So you trial fit the tank template. Don't be afraid to make and use plenty of cardboard templates for trial fitting before deciding on the final size of the tank. Cardboard is cheap, while wasted alloy sheet can be a little bit expensive. So we've went the cardboard into a circle. We've got the square bits here uh, cross marked for the centres. Um, they've got to be pop marked here and then scribed into a circle. As you see how we develop a tank as we go through the video. Um, so here we are, we've decided on the, um, the size of the body. So we've rolled the tank body to size. Um, when satisfied with the size and fit, transfer the specifications to the sheet alloy. We cut it to size and then roll to the correct diameter. You don't need a fancy set of sheet metal rollers. A, a set of 100 year old rollers were used here in this job. Now that's not actually rolling, uh, that's just sitting on the rollers. This is an old type rollers. Um, modern rollers have a, a what's known as a slip roller where you can pull one, one away from the from the body of the roller. This is an old fixed set roller, but it, as you can see, it rolled a perfect circle um, and ideal. So the metal rolling forming tools. Um, now these are quite simple, but quite unique the way they're made. Um, we have some little spigots here uh, mild steel plates uh, that the forms will be made out of. The main form here has a, a radius on its edge, probably um, quarter inch radius, maybe a little more, 516. Doesn't matter, you just eyeball it. So these simple roll forming tools were made in the lathe from scrap found in the workshop. The roll form, that's that one, and the support anvil, that one, were made from half inch mild steel plate. The main roll form plate requires a generous radius on the outer edge. The holding spigots were made from one inch OD bright mild steel shaft and welded to the former and the support anvil. Now the, the forms are machined true after welding to the spigots so that it's going to run correctly in the machine. Now there's a bit of aluminium an end cap there that's been rolled on that and that's the roll form tool. Very very simple. We'll show you how to make that in a minute. The simple roll forming tool. The roll forming tool is simply made from an old roller bearing pinned and welded to a one inch square mile steel shank. It is placed in the lathe tool post and forced against the metal to be rolled on the form tool. So simple mild steel shank, cut the plates either side, drill a hole, put a pin through and um, pop the, the old bearing. Look you could use a new one if you wanted to but this one was uh, pretty knackered and it, but it worked okay for the job. So here we are, the rolled tank parts. The parts shown here are the tank body, the rolled form top and bottom caps for the tank. Each roll blank is identical. The bottom blank will remain as is, but the top blank still requires a little bit more work, as you'll see in a minute. <coughs> so how to roll form. The essential tool required is a lathe fitted with a one horse electric motor. The sheet alloy is mounted between the metal forms and machine to a true circle. The roll bearing tool is then used to gently roll the sheet alloy over the roll form tool with the lathe spindle speed set at a medium speed. The process is completed in just a few minutes, so dozens of end caps could be made in a very short time. So here we've got the tail stock holding the, the anvil. Um, to protect the metal, there's a little bit of manila folder cardboard jammed between that and the actual alloy plate. 
So the bearing here is pressed against and rolled around and uh, made, makes the alloy form. And metal is like a fluid. It, it can be um, bent and formed into all sorts of different shapes. A close-up of the roll form tools. This shot illustrates how the simple rolling process is done. It is not overly technical and very simple to carry out, providing that tools can also be DIY made. So you don't have to go to a lot of expense to do this. Um, if you've got a lathe already, you're more than halfway there. Um, so that's that's how it's done. It's a very, very simple process, um, but not kind of um, shown much these days. The weld on alloy tank fittings. Um, there are two choices. You can either purchase them or make the fittings on the lathe. Much cheaper to make if you possess lathe machining skills. You'll also need to know how to screw or thread cut is also involved. Parts are made from al alloy bar stock. The screwing barb is made from hexagon brass stock. So these kind of things will cost you 20, 30 bucks each to buy, um, but you can make them for less than a buck each. Here's the machined and threaded filler neck. The filler neck is not yet finished. It still requires the idea to be bored out to size. This fitting will be welded to the top roll formed tank and end cap, which we'll show you in a minute. This one's had the thread already formed on it, um, and that will accept the, the cap. We'll show you that in a minute too. Machining and boring on the lathe. If this part of the project daunts you, don't let it. If you can't or don't know how to use a lathe, then you might have a friend or know someone who has. DIY machining of the weld on fittings can certainly save quite a few dollars. And it's not hard. Lathe work is quite simple. Um, if you want to learn, just go along to a night class somewhere or you get a book and start teaching yourself virtually. This is the machine machining of the filler cap. It's just a screw on cap. Uh, the thread internal thread cut in here was to match the filler neck on the previous slide. The cap, as you'll see in a moment, is a screw on type with a knurled outer edge for hand grip. The internal thread to match the filler neck base was also cut on the lathe. Now you're not tied to any particular size or thread, you just pick out what you want. UNC, UNF, um, whatever. That's up to you. Prepare the tank top and fitting. The top end cap and the threaded weld on fitting are carefully machined to fit together. Note the shoulder machined on the filler base, just around here. It is a neat fit in the hole bored through the tank, making it easy to TIG weld. So that fits neatly in the hole when it's up the right way. Tank top and fittings, the parts required for the top of the tank. The roll formed end cap and the threaded weld on fitting ready for TIG welding. So there's sitting in there and there it is with the, the cap. Alloy tank, nine parts in total. There are not that many parts that go to make up a coolant recovery tank. When choosing the DIY route, many things can be made for very low cost and you can still achieve that professional look and feel. So your roll tank body, top, uh, top end cap, bottom end cap, the weld on fittings, that's for the mount, and there's, there's your barb for the tube, and the little weld on fitting for the threaded fitting for the barb to go into, um, and your filler and a neck cap, simple. Now you need to do, when you're welding, or getting someone to weld, uh, TIG weld the body up, uh, you need to make a little clamp. Uh, very simple, just a, a band of sheet metal with a bolt through it. And it's an important tool to make during this project. There's a simple, simple sheet metal band clamp, which is used to clamp the edges of the rolled sheet metal tank body together during the tack welding procedure. It is then removed before the final welding is done. So all that does is pull the edge of this in so that it can be tack welded on the outer edge here and in the middle and um, then it's removed and the final TIG welding can be done. So the TIG welding of the tank, great if you can TIG weld yourself um, but if not don't worry because that part of the project can be farmed out. To make things easier for your welding man, make sure that everything good fit. A little bit of a welding uh, mistake here, but anyway, not to worry. So, almost complete. TIG welding is neat, clean, and professional. 
All that is required now is to buff and polish the tank before fitting to the car. So the fill and has been welded in. We've got um, one of the mounts here welded on. Nice seam welds around here. There's the, the body being welded. Um, so all looks good. So the completed project. The recovery tank fits neatly in front of the alloy crossflow radiator and complements the other alloy components. There's the tank down here, there's the alloy crossflow and the surge or header tank. Um, whether you choose to DIY or to buy a ready-made recovery tank is up to you. But if you have the skills or just want to learn how, this is a great project to begin with and you'll save quite a bit of money, not to mention how cool your friends will think you are. So there you go. That's basically how you put um, or build a um, alloy coolant recovery tank. Um, if you've got sheet metal working skills, you can do wonders. So if you wanted to try that, um, don't be afraid to have a go. The actual material cost for this tank was um, about 10 bucks. Um, our alloy recovery tanks, as you know, if you get them custom made, it can cost you up to $200. So it's worthwhile building your skills and having a bit of a go. So don't be afraid, just get in there and do it.